May this video be the starting point for a journey of self-discovery and connection with the love that resides within every human being. In any spiritual tradition, always uh, Sangha and association are to be in the right kind of company has always been a very important part of one's growth. Because rarely are there human beings just a small percentage who, irrespective of where they are, they will still stay on course. All other human beings need support. If they are not in the right company, there is very little chance of them doing the right things. Unfortunately, that's a reality. It is not necessarily a misfortune because what this means is they are open to influence. It is the responsibility of the social fabric to create the right atmosphere for every individual to grow towards what is beautiful for the individual and for everybody else around him. But not always or rarely, societies conduct this responsibility in the right sense because Societies are not led, societies, societies are all allowed to go through a metamorphosis depending upon what is the influence in that direction it grows. I don't know, I still don't want to believe it. They're telling me over eighty percent of the content on the internet is pornography. I still don't want to believe that it is possible. But people who are in the know are telling me, Sadhguru, that's how it is. That's a sick world. Eighty percent is a sick world, not a healthy world. <laughs> So be… to be under the right kind of influence, an influence which nurtures, nurtures you towards your ultimate truth, an influence which gives, gives you the necessary courage and strength to walk the path of integrity, because with a weak sense of integrity, nobody is ever going to be spiritual. And this must be understood that for bad things to hit you, it need not necessarily be aimed at you. If you just happen to be in the wrong type of ambience, negative things can hit you. That reminds me, two terrorists were preparing envelope bombs, postal bombs. After having done quite a few, one asked, the other, have you filled enough? Do you think we have filled enough RDX into the envelopes? 
The other said, why don't you open it and see? He said, oh, it will explode if I open it. He said, you fool, it's not even addressed to you. It need not be addressed to you. You open the wrong can, it will blow up in your face. This is so in the world, this is so within you. There are lots of bins in your head. You open up the wrong bin, worms will crawl out. You open up another bin, fragrance will come out of it. Have you noticed yourself? Have you yourself noticed within you? If you open certain part of your mind, filth will come out. If you open another part of your mind, fragrance will come out. Have you not noticed? To be conscious enough, to be in the right company, so that filth will not be tolerated, so that you open up the fragrance within you, not the filth, is an important part of one's growth. Because you don't have to go looking for a gutter for filth, there is enough in your head, isn't it? It is just that there is enough garbage in every place, there's enough garbage in the ashram also, so many people living. I'm sure there's enough filth. But we sit here with nice breeze and fragrance. We don't go sit there where there is filth. The same goes within you. Within the geography of your body, there is filth and fragrance. Which one do you open up for yourself and everybody around you? That's a big question. That takes a certain level of awareness and a certain company. This is why satsang, to be in the company of truth, very important. If you go around the ashram, the geography of the ashram, there must be at least eight or ten very filthy tanks. These are called septic tanks, full of septic. If you every day go sit there, of course you'll come to the conclusion, Isha Yoga Center is the filthiest place on the planet. If you fall into it, Isha Yoga is the most horrible experience in your life. But you are not supposed to fall into that pit, you are supposed to fall into this pit. But you got the geography wrong, because you have a wrong history. Your karma is your history, isn't it? Shankaran Pillai decided he is going to be a robber because none of his businesses were working, nobody was giving him a job, so he decided he will go and rob somebody. So he got himself a country-made gun. Late night he walked into a 7-Eleven shop, pointed the gun, at the clerk who was there and said, Give me the money or your geography. The clerk said, Well, what you mean is history, isn't it? Shut up, don't try to change the subject. <laughs> now, we are not talking about different subjects, there is only one subject, that's you. But you can either fall in this pit or that pit. That will be your experience of life. So to fall into the right place, it is a certain talent. You have to grow into it, you have to mature into it. You always know how to be in the right place. In a way, satsang means just that, communion with truth. 
or you are making a building a relationship with truth. If you are in the company of truth, your interiority is pleasant. If your interiority is pleasant, naturally pleasant things come towards you and you will also have a tendency to move towards pleasant things. If you make your interiority unpleasant, you will attract unpleasant things and you will also move towards unpleasant things. In the ashram when you get a depression, where do you go and sit? But don't swim in the septic tank because you're in a bad mood. But usually this is the tendency. When you're in a bad mood, you will seek five other people who are in a bad mood. No, no, when you're in a bad mood, you must seek five people who are in a good mood, isn't it? No, no, but that's not the way. When you're in a black mood, you will seek five other people who are in the same mood, isn't it? That's just like going to the septic tank for a swim because you're depressed. Wrong way to handle life, that's all. I'm not saying you should not do it. Just <laughs> not in your favor, that's all. It is just that you have become so self-sufficient, you don't need any enemies anymore in your life. That's a lot of self-sufficiency. So, spiritual process is another thing to keep physiological cleanliness and psychological cleanliness is the first thing. Otherwise, spirituality will be a battle. It will not be, you know, fragrance of a jasmine upon the spring breeze, no. It will be an uphill task, a battle, all the time a battle. A lot of people experience their life, particularly their spiritual life, as a battle because they do not maintain some fundamental discipline about the geography of their body and the geography of their psychological space. If these two things are not managed, everything will be a battle. Now, you happen to claim that you are spiritual, so that will also be a battle. That's the only way life can be. So, satsang means to make friends with truth. Truth is your friend, not falsehood. You start at whichever level of truth you know. You don't have to start at the ultimate truth, you cannot. However you understand truth, you start with that. You understand truth as, let's say, speaking truth, please start with that. You understand truth as being gentle to everything around you, start with that, it doesn't matter where you start. Whichever way you understand truth, you start from that and see how to take a step every day, which will push us in a particular direction. It's not just about Rudraksh, plants, flowers, animals, everything you've been identified as to what will take you in a spiritual direction and what will not. You have heard that this flower is the favorite of Shiva, this flower is the favorite of Vishnu. Because they're just identifying a certain reverberation which would come close to what we are referring to as Shiva or Vishnu or whatever else and saying this flower gets you closest to that. So you who touching it, you receiving it has a certain impact. So everything was identified like this, Rudraksh is one of those items which has a very unique type of reverberation. Now, why Rudraksh is worn on the body is, one thing is it cleanses the aura. You know what's aura? A-U-R-A. There is a certain field of light and energy around every body, around every object. Every physical object has its own aura, even inanimate objects. These days it is being photographed and recorded in so many different ways. 
it cleanses your aura. Aura can be from a pitch black aura to a pure white aura. You know you are… Uh, if you have seen, maybe not so much in America, but if you have seen any of the Spanish pictures or Indian pictures, you will see if they saw any saint or sage, always there will be a white halo around their head. It is not that these people walked around with uh, light bulbs behind their heads. <laughs> it is just that the artist is trying to impress upon you that this is a pure being. He had a pure white aura, that's what is being conveyed. So from a pitch black aura to a pure white aura you can have. If you meet somebody who is into occult processes, who do things with energy, if you meet such a person, most of them are just fakes who just use kitchen… Uh, what uh, chicken entails uh, to scare you. But uh, there are genuine people in that field. In India there are lots of people, so very sophisticated occult. If you meet them, they are powerful in a very different way. Totally pitch black aura, they are very, very powerful but in a completely different So from a pitch black aura to a pure white aura, in between there are a million shades. This can purify your aura. This does not mean if you wear a Rudraksh tomorrow morning, you will have a halo glowing behind your head <laughs> Not like that, but you are aspiring to purify yourself. When you are aspiring to purify yourself, every little help, Every little aid you get, you want to make use of it. Another reason why it's owned by Indian sadhus and mendicants is they are constantly traveling. One who is constantly eating and sleeping in different places, his body goes through a certain level of destabilization in the sense Many of you might have noticed this, you went to a new place, even if you're very exhausted. Somehow, in a certain place, your body won't settle down and sleep. Have you noticed this ever? If you're a traveling person, you would have noticed it in some places, your body just won't settle down. You're fully exhausted, but you cannot sleep. This is because in your own house, in your own bedroom, Today, there is something called as… Uh, what is the forensic people are using this, what? Thermal imaging, is it? See, if you sit here now, twenty-four hours later, somebody will come with a machine and find out where Gayatri was sitting. There's… there is a memory in the place which they're able to detect this person was sitting only here, not there. Well, if you bring your dog, it knows she was sitting here, isn't it? So something is left there, isn't it so? Something is obviously left there, that is why a dog or a machine or something can detect it. So, you are sleeping in the same bed every day, here certain aspect of your energy is left here, here you are very comfortable. If you go to another place where the energies are very different, your body may not settle, sometimes it could be damaging to the system. So person who is constantly traveling wears a Rudraksh so that he has a cocoon of his own energy that the outside energies does not disturb him. He has a… we call this a kavacha. You know what's a kavacha? Kavach. Hmm? Mm, it's more like a cocoon. It's a cocoon of your own energy. Wherever you go, you have your private bedroom going with you. It travels with you wherever you go. Especially in travel, the… your aura gets frayed. This is the reason why you feel so exhausted with travel. Actually, you sit and do nothing. Somebody is driving, you just sit. After ten hours, you find you're so tired. You did nothing because your energy gets frayed. Your body is moving at a faster speed than it is designed to move. So the first thing that is damaged is your aura. If you go faster, 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 let's say you travel six hundred miles per hour in an open space without a windshield, you will see your skin will peel off, isn't it? 
After that your flesh will fly off, after that your bones will fly off. <laughs> yes or no? The first thing that begins to be damaged is your aura. So with movement, with faster and faster movement, aura gets frayed. So if you wear rudraks, it gives you a certain cocoon, it gives you a certain stability to your aura. The travel, movement can be taken well. This also is a kind of protection. You know, people use negative energies to affect other people's lives. You're aware of this? Uh, what do you call that here? Yes, Billy Shunyam, the black magic or whatever you call it, there are various kinds of arts. One Veda, out of the four Vedas, one Veda is dedicated towards this, the Atharvana Veda mm -hmm. is all about how to manipulate energies to your benefit and somebody's detriment. Mm -hmm. If you wear Rudraks, it also protects you against that kind of negative situations. Many times, these things could happen to people even though they are not directed towards them. Right now, let's say somebody is doing some black magic to me, but I am not receptive to it. You are sitting here, you may get it. It is not necessary, it must be aimed at you. If you are susceptible at a certain moment, you will get it. So, many, many times people may go through bad patches and things like that. Don't ascribe this, I don't want to create fear in your mind. But many times we have seen people being influenced by certain things, not knowing what's happening, blaming all kinds of things, not knowing what exactly is happening with themselves. Wearing a simple mala gives a certain level of protection for that person. One more reason why people wear this is, even in the wild, if you were thirsty and you're walking in a jungle, you found little water, you drink it, you could be poisoned. You could paralyze yourself or you could kill yourself, because even in nature, water could be poisoned with certain gases. You know, certain lakes and other things have bad uh, whatever, they have a history of… Uh, you know, people, tribals and others have feared that there are ghosts existing, this… that is simply because the water is poisoned with certain gases and whatever else and people consume and instantly they go through pain and suffering and because of that, it got uh, some other kind of names going with that. If you just hold your rudraks above the water, it will tell you whether to drink or not. If any food appears in front of you, if you hold it, even if there is a tiny bit of poison in it, instantly it will go anti-clockwise. Let me see, check this water. <laughs> you never know. It's good water. You put a tiny drop of poison into this, which you cannot detect by smell or taste, that kind of poison. You hold this and see, immediately it will go anti-clockwise. So that's another reason and there are various other aspects to it. It… it brings down the blood pressure in your system, your nerves will be calm all these kind of things. Today doctors are prescribing rudraksh in India for hypertension, cardiac ailments. Doctors are actually prescribing rudraksh, this is just where this… your blood pressure will go down <laughs> because it has a certain reverberation which calms the whole system. The main purpose is to make you available to grace. Because ultimately, it doesn't matter what circus you do, what yoga you do, what else you do, ultimately it's only by becoming available to grace, you become a possibility. This is why a devotee attains quicker than anybody, because he just offers himself like that. If that sense of offering and things are not brought in, yoga will become circus. Without grace, whatever you do, whether it is spiritual process, health, wealth, 
success, there will be no success in any area of life if in some way you do not become available to grace, that's for sure. Either you become consciously available or unconsciously in your own way you became available, okay? Every human being, every creature is becoming available in some way. But if you're consciously making that a part of your life, then everything works, you know, it's a well-lubricated life, everything works easy and smooth. So Rudraksha is just creating that possibility, enhancing it a little bit. Not that without Rudraksha will not be available to grace. You will be. It is just that you want to use every support that is available to you. Thank you for joining us. Please share your observations on this subject in the comments. Subscribe to continue our journey together and invite others to join this path. See you soon.